Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, accessories for uh, a telescopes can be a little bit confusing at times uh, for the new astronomer. Um, you know, what eyepieces do you use to look at the planets? Uh, what eyepiece do you use to look at the uh, deep sky objects? Do you need a filter? Do you need a Barlow lens? So, you know, and the thing is, when these uh, accessories come with us telescopes, there's never really any instructions on how to use them. You buy a filter and it just comes, and uh, or a Barlow lens, and it just arrives, and there's no in, no instructions whatsoever. Um, you know, it's as though manufacture telescope manufacturers think we instantly know it all. <laughs> so. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I've just put together and it's important to, to, to use these accessories that you get uh, correctly because if you start using them incorrectly you're not going to get the best out of, uh, out of your telescope and its accessories. So now the most common accessories that come with a telescope these days, entry level telescopes like these, is you may get a couple of eyepieces, two eyepieces, sometimes it's one but usually two eyepieces. Um, it may also have been provided with a Barlow lens and maybe even a filter, a moon filter. Now it's important um, that you use these accessories to help you, not hinder you. And uh, if you use them in the wrong combination and the wrong uh, using the wrong tool for the wrong uh, for the wrong job, then uh, you know it's it, like I say, it's going to hinder you. So let's start off with different targets, common targets of what you're going to be observing when you get your new telescope. And probably the first one is going to be the moon. We all point as telescope at the moon it, 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 when you first buy a telescope. It's the first thing you point at. And, um, and, and rightly so, it's an amazing target to observe. Now the great thing about the moon is you can't really go wrong. Um, you can really play around with all your different accessories that's been provided with your telescope. You can play around with your Barlows and different combinations of eyepieces and even the filter. Um, purely because, like I say, it's big, it's bright and it's forgiving. So you really can start playing around and, and boosting the magnification up using, you know, high powered um, eyepieces and things like that. Um, but I always say just have a play with high magnification because every seasoned astronomer you'll find much, much prefers using low to medium uh, power when you're out observation. Um, it's a big misconception that uh, astronomy and the telescopes is all about power and magnification. It's not. Um, the eyepieces are actually what is giving you the magnification. It's not the telescope. Again, another misconception that your telescope is the one that's magnifying things. It's not, it's your eyepiece. A telescope's job is to gather light. So uh, the, the, the larger the telescope, the more light. This, for instance, this is gonna get a lot more, gather a lot more light than this one will. And uh, more light means a brighter image. And uh, as astron astronomers, we, uh, we are always hungry for more and more light. So this is why astronomers always want bigger and bigger telescopes, basically. So the moon, lovely and forgiving. We can really have a play and go to town on the moon. So what about the planets? Well, the planets is one of those targets where you're going to need quite a lot of magnification. And this is where your Barlow lens is definitely going to come in handy. Um, especially if you've got a uh, small telescope such as this, which is only a 400 millimeter focal length. Now remember, the longer the focal length, the more magnification the telescope is actually going to provide. Um, so putting uh, a two times Barlow, <coughs> excuse me, say in this telescope is going to increase the, you know, make the focal lens twice as long. So it's going to be an 800, going to be a lot better for observing the planets. Um, now, if you have something from uh, 650 to uh, above in focal length, um, 650 millimeters, that is, <coughs> excuse me then I would recommend getting a decent quality um, 
higher powered eyepiece maybe upgrade the your existing i always recommend upgrading um eyepieces that are provided with telescopes they're just there to get you going um they're not the best eyepieces in the world and they're, and they're not the the worst but it's always worth um, investing in a slightly better eyepiece and your higher powered eyepieces are always the ones to upgrade first you can guarantee they're the ones that's going to be of lower quality and for viewing the planets um i just like to just have um the eyepiece just a decent quality plossal eyepiece or something like that plossal is just the name of an eyepiece it's an affordable first upgrade uh, that you can just have a look for if you just do a search for plossal eyepieces uh, there'll be a whole list of um, of different size plossal eyepieces that you can get um now like i say if um but what you can do is use a barlow lens now be careful with barlow lenses i don't want to <clears throat> go go on about barlow lenses too much i have done a full video on how to use a barlow lens i'll leave a link to that in the description um but certainly don't go for these high powered barlows ones that provided with your telescope or usually only a two times barlow maybe a three times don't be uh, thinking to get a five times barlow lens or anything like that uh, they're usually aimed at astrophotography and things like that it's going to be too much for any telescope so just a two times barlow and again upgrading your existing one that's been provided with your telescope is going to be perfect uh, for just you know don't don't go uh, you don't have to pay really big prices um, you know I'm not on about getting top at range stuff just just a little bit more you know 30 40 pounds 50 pounds for another Barlow lens that's all you need to pay is going to dramatically improve your uh, views of the planets so like I say keep the power you, you're gonna have to have the, for the planets you want it nice and high the power but not too much never go too much never use a very high bar low, high powered barlow lens with a high powered eyepiece remember the lower the number on the eyepiece the more power that eyepiece or magnification is going to give you so what about deep sky objects now these are where we really do need as much light as we can possibly get so for visual work and this is all i'm going to be talking about visual work uh, for viewing deep sky objects now remember no matter how big a telescope is usually a deep sky object is just a faint fuzzy smudge in the eyepiece okay don't be put off by these big um uh, glorified pictures that you see on the internet they are exactly that the photographs um, they've been through photoshop and, and and the rest of it so in the eyepiece it's usually black and white and a little bit fuzzy but we need as much light as we possibly can get um, now that all of course starts at the telescope uh, the larger the telescope the more light you're going to get in and it also is important about the eyepiece and which eyepiece that you use for viewing deep sky and that's always going to be your lowest power or your lower on the lower end power of um, eyepieces uh, you may think wait they aren't they the are they the furthest away don't we need more power well no what we need is more light and that's the main key of uh, or, or the most important thing that you're quickly going to learn um, and find out when you're on your journey of this hobby is light is the key and it's not it's not all to do with power so a low powered eyepiece now you've only got to look at uh, say a um, a high powered eyepiece there's a six millimeter plus light piece there and here's a 25 millimeter uh, eyepiece and if we just look at the bottom of them of of, of uh, where the light's coming into it you can see straight away the difference in how much light can get in the high powered one and how much light can get it in the low powered one uh, the 25 and and this is what i'm saying uh, so you know using just a, a low powered eyepiece on its own is going to get the a maximum amount of light uh, coming through the telescope so always low power you don't need your barlows or anything like that when you're looking at deep sky objects 
Now, just a little tip about finding deep sky objects, which kind of contradicts what I've just said, but it's just a little tip for if you can't find what you're looking for. And that is, if you're scouting around and you're saying, I still can't find the target I'm looking for, maybe increase the power just a little bit. Um, if you're using a 25 millimeter eyepiece, maybe put your 10 millimeter eyepiece in there. What this is going to do, it's gonna narrow the field of view and it's gonna darken the background and it's going to make the contrast of the two, of the deep sky object and the darker uh, back, uh, background and it'll really pop out more, a lot more than just what with your, um, your lower powered eyepieces. So that's just something to try, but I always quickly, you know, swap back to your low power and that's where you're going to get your best views for uh, deep sky objects. So what about filters? Now, like I say, the most common filter to be provided with telescopes is a moon filter. And to be honest, it's the most important one of them all for visual astronomy. Um, I, I always say anything above uh, 60 millimeters and anything above um, four inches, well, this is actually five inches, but anything above uh, four inches, it's essential that you get a moon filter. Now, all a moon filter is, is, is basically like wearing a pair of sunglasses. It's going to cut down the glare from the moon. Um, if you haven't had a chance to have a look at the moon or you already have looked at the moon, you may have noticed how dazzling it is. And it can be quite dazzling in the, eye, in the eyepiece. Um, and this is it's no good for for you know your nice dark adapted eyes and uh, you may have found that once you've taken taken your eye away from the eyepiece you've got that blue ball flashing you know that goes off that uh, you get from flash cameras uh, so a moon filter though is something i would highly recommend um, as if you haven't got one get yourself one board uh, you can pick a decent moon filter up for as little as 10 pounds um, or whatever your country's equivalent is. Um, a little dodge to this that you can try, I wouldn't recommend it all the time, I'd just get yourself a moon filter, but I did mention it's like wearing sunglasses. Well, if you've got a uh, eyepiece with uh, a good eye relief, that means you can, you know, um, uh, eyeglass wearers will know what I'm talking about here, where you can't quite get up to the eyepiece on short eye reliefs. But if it's got a decent eye relief, so you don't have to get your eye right up to the eyepiece, you can wear sunglasses for viewing the moon. Uh, an old friend of mine, he used to have a specially lunar pair of sunglasses where he just popped one of the lenses out. <laughs> he just used to wear these sunglasses. They were those little round ones, you know, those John Lennon sunglasses, as I call them. Yeah, and he just had one of those and he just used to use that as a moon filter because that's basically all a moon filter is. It's, it's just a, a darkened piece of glass. So... Um, coloured filters, um, again, I don't want to go too much into this. I have done a video, a more in-depth video on colour filters. Now, um, in a nutshell, basically, they're not important. And they are literally down to the eye of the beholder. And uh, some people love them, some people hate them. Um, I am in the in-between. I use them very, very occasionally. Uh, coloured filters are for, um, sometimes they can increase the contrast on uh, planetary views and things like that. Um, they're not important. You don't need them. If you haven't got them in your um, accessories, don't worry about it. Worry about a moon filter. Get yourself a moon filter. Uh, the rest of the filters that you've probably heard about, like um, UV filters and light pollution filters, these are usually aimed for astrophotography. And those sort of filters are important when it comes to astrophotography, but for visual, not so much. Um, again, I, when I look at the in an eyepiece, I like to see the natural beauty of what I'm looking at, the natural colors. Um, again, um, 
I, when it comes to moon filters, go for a more bluey colored filter. I don't like looking at a green moon, the, 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 or, you know, some, some of these filters come in green for the moon. So with the blue filter and just get yourself the right one. Uh, and another little quick tip, uh, the larger the te your telescope, the darker the filter, filter needs to be, okay? So if you've just got a small refractor like this, you want quite a light, uh, transparent uh, filter for, for the moon. But like I say, go for the blue one and you don't really notice it as much. Once you're uh, observing for quite a while, that sort of blue tinge, you kind of forget about it. Um, but that's uh, about it for filters. Like I say... <laughs> Some people say, I don't like using them. I can't see any difference. It makes it worse when I uh, use a filter. Like I say, usually for visual, it's for planets and things like that, the colored filters. Uh, but like I say, there's nothing wrong with you grabbing a bunch and giving them a whirl. You never know, you might like them. So as you can see, uh, accessories for telescopes are not complicated. It's just that the they don't come with instructions. <laughs> and, um, uh, and so there's no way of actually knowing unless somebody tells you uh, how to use half of them. But the, my, my biggest um, uh, point of advice would be less is more when it comes to power. Always, always over. Power slash magnification is what I mean by when I say power. Um, less is always more. And you are always going to get your best views when it's just the telescope and a good quality eyepiece with nothing in between. Well, I think that about covers everything with the accessories that you get with entry-level telescopes. Now, if there's anything I may have forgot, or if you've got any questions, please leave them in the, in the uh, comments below. Um, I always, always read the comments. I always try and get back to you. Um, some, some of you do slip the net for some reason, and I see your comment about three weeks later. <laughs> but usually I do get uh, back to every single one of you. Uh, so if you've got a question, just like I say, leave it in the comments below. Well, that about wraps up another video. Thank you so much for watching if you watched this far. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the rest of it. I do do regular uploads for the new astronomer. In the meantime, take good care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.